And one of the best ways to experience it is with HomePod Mini. To tell you more? No, the best way to experience it is with HomePod regular, but nobody bought that except me. So, fine, we'll settle with the Mini, which is what we're using in here. Hello and welcome to the very first episode of Weekly Waste of Time. My name is Jeff Landsman. I am so excited to be starting this show because we are doing a show where we take the tech talk out of tech talk. We're getting rid of all the jargon, we're getting rid of all the nonsense, and we're not going to just talk Apple. I formerly did a show called Apple iPhone Daily, which I loved doing, loved, really built it up to sort of a platform that I was proud of. And then I thought, you know, I'm kind of boxed in only talking about Apple devices and Apple news and Apple, Apple, Apple. So this show is going to be a little different. We're going to talk Apple. We're going to talk ebook readers. We're going to talk Android and Android tablets. We're going to talk iPhone. We're going to talk apps. We're going to talk Android apps. We're going to talk all sorts of fun stuff to make your life easier. And we're going to do it in a non-techy way. So this is the very first episode. And I thought, what a perfect way to start than with sort of a bridge to the old show talking about Apple. So Apple held an event today and they noticed, oh, Jeff's drinking. He's drinking uh, in the middle of a show. What, what's he doing? I want this to be sort of conversational, like a coffee talk, really just sort of chill, laid back. We're going to do anywhere between 10 to 20 minute shows and it will be weekly. That simple, right? So Apple had an Apple event today and they talked about a few pretty exciting things and a, and a few, <laughs> what? So I'm gonna go kind of through what they talked about and then give you sort of the non-techy version of what this all means. So let's start with Apple Music. Now, this was one of the most confusing announcements I've ever seen from Apple. What they announced is a, I'm not gonna say the name, but it's S-I-R-I. -I. So we will refer to S-I-R-I -I as Sally from this point on. So they talked about Sally and how Sally is so great and it, we all know that that's not true. And now there's a new plan where you could just use Sally as your music launcher. So Sally's gonna basically be tapped into the entire Apple Music category, all of it, the, the, the different so the playlists and albums and songs and whatever you need, you just ask Sally. Sally's gonna play that for you. And if you're willing to do it, this is what got confusing. If you're willing to do it this way, you can pay $5 a month instead of 10 or 15. Yeah, great. If only Sally worked. <laughs> if, only, if only my experience with Sally in the past was good, which it's not. So, I'm giving a thumbs down on this whole thing. It seems confusing. It seems weird. It seems like I can already do this if I have the regular plan. So you're saying if I strip out the need for touching, you're just going to get a bunch of customers saying, well, I just I just want to launch it on my phone and then go to it. I just want to go to it. What do I do then? Well, then you got to pay for the more expensive plan. Well, then I don't want this. So I don't understand this. I don't get this. Let's move on. The next thing they talked about were AirPods. Ooh, we love AirPods, don't we love them? They're great. In fact, I have a pair right here in the Phase 6 Productions desk that looks like a little camera. I don't know if you can see this. I'm, if, you're, if you wanna watch the show on YouTube, I'm showing what it looks like. But uh, this is sort of going to be a double whammy. I'm gonna release the shows as a podcast, and if you wanna see the show, You'll get some video bonus, you'll get like B-roll, you get footage of what we're talking about, and maybe you just wanna throw it on in the background and you're like, hey, well, I, it's a lot easier to just watch it on YouTube, so I'm gonna watch it that way. So, here we are. I love the AirPods Pros. I love them. I love them, I love them, I love them. Uh, I love the convenience of them. I love that you can say, hey, Sally, and it'll just respond without even touching it, so you're carrying your groceries, and you're like, oh, God, hey, Sally, uh, whatever, turn off the alarm, or whatever you're, Thing is great. I love it. Absolutely fantastic. I love that it jumps from device to device. And all of a sudden now it's working everywhere. I'm on my iPad Pro. Okay, I'm going to put that down. Now I'm on my iPad mini. Oh, I'm going to read and listen and watch a couple YouTube videos. Awesome. Okay. Oh, now I'm going to go for a walk real quick. I'm on my phone. No need to do anything. It just switches. Amazing. Love that. 
The sound quality on the pros, B minus, C plus. I mean, they're way better sounding in the ear buds, like way better. In fact, oh, look at this. I am going to show you what I use. If you're watching the YouTube video, these are the Sony XM4s and they look like this. Show you. Now, they, if you're not watching, you're just listening, they fit in your little jeans pocket, just like the AirPods Pros do, your little tiny, I'll show you this, this little, little teeny pocket. And it's where I think Steve Jobs pulled the iPod Nano out of years ago. So AirPods 3, I guess, technically, they're, they're redesigned and they're gonna include the spatial audio feature. Now, we're not a tech talk, so all that means is surround sound audio. They're, it's fine, it's fine. Now, surround sound video, I get. If you're watching a movie and you wanna watch it in surround sound, it's this sort of pseudo fake surround sound that's in your ears. Great, I love it, I love it. A plus for including that in the regular AirPods. The other thing is the AirPods are not gonna have the little silicone tips that go on the, uh, the end. And so I just have to say, at this point, my, my two cents is simply that everyone has a budget. And so what they've done is they've created a really amazing option with the new AirPods. I haven't heard them, but I'm going to say that uh, this is a big thumbs up. Okay, let's talk about the M1 Pro and the M1 Max. Now, how do we talk tech without talking tech? How do we sort of define what this is? Okay, it's just like good, better, best now, right? We've got the M1, that's good. We've got the M1 Pro, that's better. And we've got the M1 Max, that's best. If you're doing schoolwork and you're doing, you know, actually a bunch of creative work, the M1 is really powerful. Uh, the M1's great. It's gonna handle most things. If you are into any sort of graphics, so you do a lot of Photoshop work, you do a lot of After Effects or Apple Motion or 3D design, any sort of any of that kind of stuff, then you may want to get the M1 Pro. That might be a better fit for you. If that's all you do, if you're deep into, like if you're a graphics designer or artist, you probably want the M1 Max. And that's the exciting announcement. They're only putting it in two machines right now. They're putting it in the MacBook Pro 14 inch and 16 inch machines. Uh, what does this mean? Well, it means that we're gonna wait for an iMac Pro. We're gonna wait for a Mac Pro. We're gonna wait for a Mac Mini Pro, some sort of like better version of any of those machines. They simply don't exist yet. So what they've done is they've gone, we're gonna start with the MacBook Pro. We're getting rid of the touch bar, so that's gone forever and goodbye and good riddance. And there's a 14.2 inch screen, a 16.2 inch screen. You pick your chip, M1 Pro or M1 Max. If you want just a regular M1, you can get the 13 inch MacBook Pro that they're gonna still sell that, and that's it. So what do I feel about these machines? Well, there's a lot of other stuff in the machines. They put six speakers in them. You have a 1080p, uh, which is just the, the highest HD quality camera for your sort of Zoom camera, FaceTime camera, uh, versus what used to be a 720p. So it's significantly sharper and better. It's got this feature where it'll slow down the refresh rate of the screen and speed it up. To take the tech out of that, it, it, it's really saving battery when it does that. Uh, if you're a video editor, you want to have that off because it's going to mess with you. It, there, there's a lot of nice features. The screen is the same technology as the iPad Pro and the same technology as their very expensive monitor. So it's going to be this gorgeous screen on the laptop. It does have a notch in it. You heard me right, there's a notch, sort of like the iPhone. And so who is the MacBook Pro for before we wrap up this show? Who is it for? I'm personally holding off on the MacBook Pro and I'm sort of the creative target audience for this. Having said that, I work uh, with this great company called Melico and they are 
uh, designers, their graphics designers. This is perfect for uh, people like them. Like it really is sort of, if you're a graphics person, this is a big leap forward in that some of the stuff is three times faster, 10 times faster, blah, 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 blah. The one thing is to convert footage, it would be a, a lifesaver to have a machine like this. It would save time, but I have multiple machines. So typically what I'll end up doing is just splitting it over the few machines and it, it, it goes just fine. So let's recap. That was the announcement. That's it. They talked music, uh, this crazy Sally, S-I-R-I, thing which I don't get at all big thumbs down to that oh they announced new colors for the HomePod mini I forgot to mention uh, which is great listen if you're a college student if you're uh, you know like in your 20s and you got like a fun little apartment and you want to zazz it up I get it we got new airpods that was sort of just due and then they upgraded the MacBook Pros so if you're like well maybe I should get the pro I am a college student and maybe I need the pro you don't the M1 is so powerful. Now, if you have unlimited money and you go, oh, listen, I just want a machine that's going to last for a few years, three or four or five years, yeah, get a pro. But my guess is that these M1 machines are going to last just as long or almost as long. And I have to tell you, they are just impressively powerful, especially the MacBook Air, which I have for the business. I mean, I'm editing on that. I'm editing 4K footage on that, and, it, and it's like butter. It runs fine. It's the same chip they put in the iPad Pro. So this is the M1 is no is not to be perceived as some sort of well this one's weak and the other two are powerful. It's all powerful. It's just it's like amazing, insane, outrageous. Like the, that's the three speeds. So even the bottom one's amazing. So that is the show. My name is Jeff Landsman. If you want to reach me, it's twittercom slash Jeff Landsman. L A N D S M A N and if you want to subscribe to the show, click the subscribe button. I would love for you to subscribe on YouTube or if you're in the podcast app right now, whatever your podcast app is, definitely subscribe. I'd love to continue on. We're going to do this once a week. We've got ebook readers coming up. We've got Samsung tablets coming up. We've got all sorts of fun shows in the works and I'm excited to be back in this digital, digital world talking tech. See you soon.